Hey, what's up guys? This is Atariq here from smartbytrainers.com. One of the best features of a smart trainer is erg mode. And erg mode is when you are attempting to do a structured workout using an app or a device that supports erg mode, and the trainer will control the resistance for you. And as you go through each interval block, the trainer will automatically make small, tiny adjustments to resistance to keep you at your target watts, regardless of how fast or slow you pedal. So there is no need for you to manually adjust resistance or worry about pacing. As long as you are pedaling, the trainer will take care of the resistance for you to keep you at your target watts, just like magic. But should you use erg mode all the time, and do we rely on erg mode too much that it is possibly hurting our training? Or is it good for your training and as long as you are hitting your target watts, then who cares? Well, today, Coach Heath Dotson from hdcoaching.net is back on the Smart Bike Trainer channel to discuss this specific topic. And if you find this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like this. Welcome back, Heath. Thanks, Tariq. Uh, happy to be back. Uh, Heath, I wanted to get your thoughts on erg mode and the use of erg mode. Uh, first of all, do you use erg mode yourself? And if, you, if so, how often do you spend time uh, training in erg mode versus slope or resistance mode? It kind of depends on the workout, and I think we'll get into that a little bit later on. Um, but um, I, I would say if I'm doing specific workouts, uh, probably about 50-50. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously if you're just uh, riding on Zwift or, or one of the other platforms, uh, then you don't, you know, I don't use it. Um, uh, say it's a zone two ride or something like that. I'll, I'll just do, you know, I'll sign up for a Fondo or, or just ride free ride or whatever um, and, and won't use it during that time. But um, yeah, I, I, I do use it. I probably use it like I said, about half the time. So some athletes believe that erg mode can be determinantal to certain sessions uh, or specific type of workouts. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I think different workouts definitely uh, lend themselves better to erg mode versus uh, just normal resistance. Um, I would say anything along, just anything kind of steady state, I, I think um, erg mode works pretty well. Uh, so, you know, I think some people kind of look at it and say, well, you know, that will affect your ability to pace if you're doing a threshold workout or if you're doing a tempo workout or sweet spot or whatever you want to call it. Uh, honestly, you know, when it gets right down to it, the power is the power. So uh, for me, it's a lot of times it's easier just to sort of set it and forget it um, and just do the work and just have a, that way I'm not having to necessarily concentrate on uh, you know, holding a certain power with, you know, the varying uh, terrain or whatever that, that there might be going on there. Um, so, yeah, I think I think the steady state stuff lends itself really well to that. I think the um, higher intensity stuff is a little, uh, a little trickier to try to do erg mode on. Um, sprints definitely don't want any part of erg mode on sprints. Uh, I would even say you know, VO2 type workouts. I think the problem with VO2 is you're basically above your threshold the whole time. And that, that's the whole point of it. And a lot of times, especially if you're doing them correctly, the last ones, you're really starting to fail. Um, and when you start to fail on erg mode, if you've ever, if you've ever done that before, basically you just get to the point where you can't pedal the bike anymore. And that, that's sort of, that kind of goes against what uh, you know, VO2 type intervals and especially sprints. I mean, sprinting is peak power and then holding, you know, a, a, another peak after that. So obviously you're wanting to hit a, a high peak number and then try to hold the highest uh, wattage you can for, you know, 15, 20 seconds or whatever it is. Um, you know, even the 45 second to a minute sort of anaerobic work capacity workouts, those things are definitely better done in just standard resistance mode. Just really, to me, the steady state stuff is really where uh, the erg mode actually works really well. That's an interesting point that I bring in with the VO2 max, how if it's done right, uh, you should be sort of failing those last couple of uh, intervals. A lot of apps, mm -hmm they recommend you putting the trainer on a smaller gear because the trainer tend to respond a lot better in erg mode when you are in a small gear. So for example, a small chain ring in the front 
and uh, somewhere in the middle, mm -hmm. just keep that chain straight for the trainer to respond better. And when you're putting on a small gear, the trainer tend to just lock you into the, your watts. And uh, compared to uh, if you put it on a bigger gear, there's tend to be a lot more variable variability in your power. Do you see any benefits uh, of putting the trainer in a smaller gear and just locking you down uh, to, let's say, 250 watts the whole uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes compared to having a little bit of variability up and down? You're still reaching the same average for the, for the workout, but you're getting there uh, and a little bit different. I, I think what ends up happening is you, you're, especially if you have something like, I, I think the tax is a little different because it's more electronically braked and there's not a, a true flywheel. Uh, if you have something like the Wahoo or, or some of the other ones that actually have a, a pretty substantial flywheel, when you're using a big gear, uh, the, the smart trainer is having to work pretty hard to sort of keep it within that range because you are actually creating a lot of energy that that it has to kind of break it down um, personally i think it's a personal preference to be quite honest for me it feels a lot better to use a bigger gear uh, because it does tend to it just feels more road like i mean for, for it has better road feel uh, the smaller gear I, you know i think you know we talked about this earlier is that you know you lose a little bit of inertia uh, with the trainer and to me that's a little annoying and so it's one more thing that I have to think about so if I'm already on the trainer and I'm already inside and I'm already doing a workout that's relatively difficult the last thing I want to think about is how this doesn't feel like riding outdoors. So you don't see any benefits to just locking you down at that 250 and recruiting possibly even recruiting different muscles when you're in the smaller chain ring than what you usually recruit uh, when you're riding outside. Do you see any benefits to, the, to doing no, that? No, I, not really. No, I, I, I don't. I, I think you know. I, I think you're you're looking at a, uh, you're trying to, f to generate a physiological response. Right. So, um, the physiological response is being able to produce the power. So, um, I, I think honestly, however you get there, as long as you get there, that's all that's that that's all that really matters. Final question, Heath. Uh, what do you usually recommend mm -hmm. for your athletes when you put a workout on training piece for your athletes? What do you usually tell them? Yeah, a lot of times what I'll do is um, we'll kind of look at whatever the particular workout is. So, if, you know, like I said, if it's if it's a steady state workout or if it's some some, you know, even just threshold or just above threshold, um, I'll say, let's, you know, most of the time they have it set up in Zwift or what, you know, whatever program they're to do steady, you know, to do not steady state, but to do erg mode. Some people don't care for it. Um, and, you know, I kind of leave it up to them. Ultimately, uh, I don't make a necessarily a specific recommendation and say, okay, I just do this one on erg mode, just do this on, um, you know, on uh, normal resistance mode. Uh, it's it's one of those things where I kind of leave it up to uh, I, I leave it up to the the person as to which one feels better. Like I said, for me as a coach, I, I think you know I, I don't necessarily think one makes uh, it, I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. I think there's good applications for erg mode, and I think there's bad applications for it, um, like we talked about, but. Um, for me, when I look at things, it's are the numbers being hit? Um, are are we getting the the response that we need to get out of it? You know, and some people just really struggle with um, with erg mode for whatever reason, and but they can do the numbers with uh, you know regular resistance mode. Um, and uh, some people are the opposite. You know, they'd rather be in erg mode all the time. Um, and so I like I said, I just kind of leave it up to I leave it up to the individual um, because, like I said, I don't think that there's a uh, a specific kind of uh, you know reaction you get you know using either one. As long as, like I said, as long as the average, as long as you're coming out at the end where you need to be, I I'm happy with that. So okay. 
Well, that should do it for today. Heath, thanks for being here again. Uh, please check out uh, Heath on social media and his website, hdcoaching.net, and I'll have all the links in the description below as well. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and, if, uh, and subscribe to my channel if you are still watching and want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.